I really enjoy Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. This game had potential to be an 11 out of 10. And even with like one or two problems, it's a 10 out of 10 game. But as it stands right now, it's like 8.9 out of 10. It looks wonderful. I had a nostalgia trip going through the story. It's a great Pokemon game. And I'm not even talking about the glitches. I don't even knock the game at all for the glitches because they don't get in the way of the gameplay. You have to go out of your way to cheat through glitches in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. And unfortunately, since a majority of the Pokemon community just supports cheating anyways, like, it doesn't make things any better. But I still want to talk about the problems that have irked me with these games that are just keeping it from being perfect or just making everything in the Pokemon community just a little worse. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Verse Recorder. If the game had Verse Recorder, 11 out of 10. We need battle replays. I don't know what happened. Pokemon Sun and Moon, everyone loved battle replays. Pokemon Let's Go. All right. I can see why there wouldn't be battle replays in there, but even then, it's like, okay, there could have still been battle replays. It would have been really cool to share Gen 1 battles or at least save them. Then Pokemon Sword and Shield. Crazy competitive quality of life improvements. The entire region is about, like, getting fame as a Pokemon master. No battle replay. It makes absolutely no sense, and it's completely unjustifiable because rental teams stayed for Pokemon Sword and Shield when they were less loved and less used in Pokemon Sun and Moon than battle re replays, and then rental teams only became an avenue for hacking to where every non-Japanese world champion, including former world champion Wolf Glick, has been caught with cheated Pokemon. So literally, the only thing rental teams were good for is proving that every top VGC player is a cheater. Kind of worthless. And there's even precedent for the verse recorder to return for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl because it was introduced in Generation 4. And also, since it's like an Ilka Studios game, it's like, all right, whatever weird reasons made, like, Whatever weird decisions, whatever happened to make battle replays not return in Pokemon Sword and Shield, not even get patched in with, like, the DLC and stuff. Alright, we got a new dev studio, we got some new stuff going on for Blind Time Shining Pearl. Why not? I don't get it, and it deeply upsets me. The next problem is no overworld shinies in the underground. How can you introduce overworld Pokemon in Let's Go, which is one of the most wanted things ever in Pokemon, give us overworld shinies, which was like the coolest, most hyped thing ever, and then remove it in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Then see all the backlash from that decision in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and have a special feature where the rest of the Pokemon game, like the rest of the game, is random encounters. So you bring back the overworld Pokemon, and then you keep it without overworld shinies. And... Another problem is that the shiny hunting Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl, it's also not really that good. For multiple reasons. It's kind of broken because of just weird decisions on the Poke Radar side. But also, for doing the task of finding 40 Diglets underground, which takes time, you only get plus one shiny roll. So it goes from one in 4,000 to one in 2,000. Like one in 2,000 for overworld shinies. That's acceptable. That doesn't put too many shiny Pokemon into the game. If that's like a fear that the devs have, they're like, oh, Pokemon, let's go. Too easy for shinies. And then Pokemon Sword and Shield was just broken. The, the official explanation for how shinies worked was just wrong, according to data mining, and that never got any better. And it just, like, Pokemon Sword and Shield was the worst Pokemon game for shiny hunting. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl had a lot of potential for being one of the best, and ends up being about as bad as Pokemon Sword and Shield, like, slightly better. And another thing is that the shiny charm only works for breeding. And I'm okay with that because I don't like having to catch every Pokemon in the regional decks, a hundred or several hundred Pokemon, just to get the a couple more rolls on the shiny odds. So I think that's okay. But shiny charm for the underground, and then like if the Diglett bonus is like plus two rolls and shiny charm was plus two rolls, okay. Now we got some. Now we have incentive for the shiny charm, even without overworld shinies, and like a lot of things that could have come together to make this game better. If there's Poke Radar and Overworld Shinies, whew, it, it, it then becomes a really close decision between the best Pokemon games being Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl or Heart Gold Soul Silver. And I that we don't we don't live in that reality, so I don't have to put myself through that, but yeah, like the games could have been the best. And then we have baffling shenanigans going on with the Poke Radar, to where the Poke Radar is somehow both intentionally and unintentionally nerfed. The unintentional one being that the IV rolls are broken. Like, 
if, again, Pokemon Let's Go brought us so much quality of life. I'm not even trying to be like, oh man, Pokemon Let's Go spoiled us so much. It's like, no, it was good things in Pokemon Let's Go. And like, you can nerf them slightly, but chains for the Poke Radar should be that once you hit that threshold, every Pokemon has the IVs like we saw with Pokemon Let's Go. You reach a 40 chain plus, you deserve every Pokemon to have three IVs. I mean, Virtual Console Transfer had those IVs. SOS had guaranteed IVs. Pokemon Sword and Shield, even the Friends of... It was easier to get IV Pokemon in X and Y compared to the modern Generation 8 remakes. I don't get it. So, yeah, like, this is reported to be a bug, but, I mean, it hasn't been fixed. Like, I, I don't know, like, what the patching thing... And at this point, it really feels like when the Pokemon company is finished making a main series game, they abandon it completely. That everyone on that team is moved to a different project. And we've kind of like seen that over the last couple of years with like Game Freak having an A team and a B team working on separate projects at the same time and like multiple development cycles and stuff while outsourcing the work to hundreds of people. Now, I don't consider that a problem. But what I do consider a problem is like not even leaving one or two people to monitor and manage the game. Like the game comes out and if there's a severe problem, then maybe people are pulled from the new project to then quickly fix the problem in the old Pokemon game and then jump back to the new one. But I'm like, how is this not fixed in a week and just quickly patched and updated? And then there's also just this, which is an intentional decision to nerf the, the chain rates. And that's it. Like, instead of, like, the original games having a 98% chance for the chain to continue, in Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl, it's 93% chance, and... Because of how multiplicative values work, you have a 5% chance to make it to a 40 chain. Because of animations and catching the Pokemon, it already takes long enough to get to a 40 chain, and the original games had about a 44% chance if you were doing everything perfectly. So, even with perfect play now, 1 in 20. You have a 95% chance for failure to get the best IV and shiny odds. It's not even the best IVs could get 5 IVs out of 100 chain, but the odds of that are pretty much impossible. And the numbers don't even make sense because, okay, in modern Pokemon, we have a 1 in 4,000 chance of a shiny instead of 1 in 8,000. And also, like, the benefit here is that if you somehow make it to a crazy deep chain, catching a shiny Pokemon doesn't end the chain. But I still don't see how that's worth it or offsets or anything when the odds are just so absurdly low. So it's like, okay, this is maybe defensible because it is intentional, but it's like, was it not tested enough? Like, why not just 95? And then, like, the odds go way up compared to where they are now. And then with this, like, this is a problem. It's almost impossible to be competitive in this game for no reason. And again, it's not like, oh man, Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Sword and Shield made you soft and all that. It's like, now we're actually going back generations on generations for something that just seems needlessly hard for no reason like okay there's like a mix between nostalgia and stuff and this is also where I want to make the statement that I'm okay with doing this I'm okay with the multi hundred hour grind to make competitive Pokemon or get to the place point where I can start spitting out a lot of competitive Pokemon really quick because I've done in the past I did generation 4 generation 5 6 7 8 but the problem is hacking is more tolerated more accepted more supported like you it's at the point like Pokemon has gotten so toxic so scummy that you are actually attacked for being a legitimate player. You're called stupid. You're called an idiot. Like, why would I waste my time when cheating? There's no problem with cheating. Like, it's just, it's just completely effed in the Pokemon community right now. And that's kind of like what makes it worse. Like, I have no problem working for my things. 90% of the Pokemon community, probably like 95% now with Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, 95% of the Pokemon community, they hate working for their things. They want to be spoiled brats, and then they're just going to attack. And then that's the thing, like, the mob and shitty people just came together and bullied legitimacy so hard that cheating won. And, like, it, it's just so, it's just, it's unbelievable that this happened in Pokemon the way that it did. So, I'm not even, like, I'm, I'm complaining because of how much support cheating has gotten. That was the thing about, like, Pokemon Let's Go, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Cheating is never okay. Cheating is wrong. And, again, 90% of the Pokemon community struggles with that fact. But, at least Pokemon Sword and Shield made it feel like I had a chance to compete with cheating. Same thing with Pokemon Let's Go, even Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like, it's like, okay, I can make my team, and instead of being 100 hours behind, I'm only 50 hours behind. You know, like, it It was still a gap. Cheating still generated a massive advantage for Pokemon Sword and Shield, but it wasn't as bad, and it gave me hope. In Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, I have no hope.
And that brings me to another thing that broke me, because it's not just like the IVs or the lack of shinies or just like some of the quality of life being removed, it's that the game is stacked against you if you're trying to be a legitimate player in these modern times. I, was, I spent like over an hour just farming the ace trainers to get money, and I didn't realize that the money capped at a million poke dollars. This makes no sense, and it tilted me off of the face of the earth to where in the live stream, I ended up going on like a two and a half hour rant off of just this one thing because that was the tipping point. That was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Well, I'm just like, why? Why? Why this? Like, this isn't for nostalgia's sake. Why can't I just grind money to where money isn't a problem? With this, money is still a problem. I go out, buy some vitamins. Well, that just pulls me out of the gameplay loop. I have to stop what I'm doing, leave get supplies, come back, continue, and then just keep getting pulled out of the gameplay loop very frequently. And again, there's like no vitamin sale. Vitamins have been half off in all the other Pokemon games, except for this one. Okay, so the game isn't good for shinies, the game isn't good for IVs, the game isn't good for money, the game isn't good for EVs. Oh yeah, that's another thing, like, EV training doesn't have any alt thing going on. Pokemon Sun and Moon, we had SOS battles. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, the gameplay loop in Pokemon Sword and Shield was just incredible because you spend time in the wild area and then you have everything you need. And it even got crazier with the Isle of Armor that you do like specific grinding methods in the Isle of Armor and it gets so good that it beats out breeding for just making straight up competitive Pokemon like XL candies, bottle caps, you had enough of them, vitamins, and then you just have a competitive ready Pokemon like that because you are rewarded for the time spent in your game. Diamond and Pearl is really scattered on that. I feel like they are lacking in just a couple of ways. Like the sphere traders are cool and being able to bypass battle points to use spheres to buy the TMs that you need, like the super competitive ones, that's fine. I'm like, I can survive the TMs not being reusable in this game. It's like, all right, I have to work for my things a bit and they give you multiple TMs in some situations and some of the other TMs are just easy to get, that's fine. But then like, there's nothing really else to get out of the underground because it's mostly like, oh, you get the, like you just find the statues, but the statues don't really go anywhere after a point because there's no IVs in the underground. There's not really better shiny Pokemon in the underground. And while you can get like competitive items and useful things and hard scales, it's not as good as Denning in Pokemon Sword and Shield. I feel like it would only take one thing for the underground to just have like that incredible, unbelievable quality of life, and that would be finding candies underground, the return of large and extra large candies, because getting Pokemon to level 100 in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is is the worst experience like it is not viable so we've gone from level 100 bottle capping being not really worth it but kind of an idea in pokemon sun and moon to being competitive if not better than breeding just being absolutely the worst useless feature also pokemon let's go bottle capping incredible but also you could easily chain and get five iv or even six iv competitive pokemon and even a competitive shiny pokemon just through that or if you got your shiny you just do the blissey chaining or not blissey chancy chaining for a few hours and then boom level 100 shiny competitive pokemon it's nuts the trainer rematch system completely ruins the post game and makes it not worth it or impossible to get level 100 pokemon because not only are the pokemon too high of levels they have perfect evs and ivs and natures and items, and cheese strats. Like, how am I supposed to efficiently farm the Elite Four when the first thing that's gonna happen is filter, light clay, light screen reflect Mr. Mime? That battle immediately takes longer than it has any right to. The level 82, timid, 252, EV, 31, IV, speed, Alakazam with a life orb is just going to slaughter no matter what Pokemon you bring unless it's max IV perfectly EV trained and that's not what you like you shouldn't need to do that for the elite four that's what the battle tower is for and my biggest knock on this feature is like okay it's cool we have like this in-game like high level post game that's pretty challenging and stuff and that's what a lot of quote-unquote Pokemon fans have wanted but these people aren't fans they're like Ew, EXP shares in the game, I'm not even gonna buy it, Pokemon's too easy. So, if this is a response, and it seems like a response to all the idiots out there saying, Pokemon's too easy of a game, well, they're not playing it. They don't respect this anyways. No one's no one's out there going like, oh wow, look at how these are like the best Pokemon games ever. They rival Nuzlocke's and ROM hacks because the end game is an actual challenge. No, no one's saying that because those are idiots that you should have never catered to anyways. And now all you've done is ruin the post game of legitimate players because this isn't fun. 
this, like, a challenge like this has no need to be in Pokemon, because again, like, the post game's for Battle Tower. You can throw these cheesy IV things in the Battle Tower, and then it's even. You can't bring a level 100 versus level 83, it's level 50 versus level 50, so it's even more of a challenge when that happens, and that's what the rewards are for. The Elite Four rematch, like, it's supposed to be something you just endlessly grind for money and experience, and then to just kind of, like, fill in your game that way. It shouldn't be just, like, Battle Tower cheese strats and overly strong Pokemon for no reason. That doesn't add anything to the game. Like, you will eventually beat this, but then you can't farm it. And there's no other farming in the game. That's what upsets me. Like, no Blissies. That would be pretty cool. That would add more to the underground where it's like, oh, now I really need to find, like, shiny normal type boxes and that really make use of the Diglett bonus and all these other things. Like, okay, n that, that, like, just small little changes, like quality of life or testing or just wanting to make the player's experience better in any kind of way would have changed everything about these games. Like Pokemon Let's Go hit the nail on the head. Like things I never even thought would happen, like the Nature Lady. The Nature Lady is the coolest thing to ever happen in Pokemon. Didn't make a return because like Synchronize and stuff. So seeing her as a replacement for Synchronize, that is Game Freak levels of creativity that shows why they are the number one franchise in the world making some of the most beloved games. Pokemon Let's Go is objectively one of the best Pokemon games ever made. I have it as my second favorite behind Heart Gold Soul Silver. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl doesn't have that quality of life to kick out Pokemon Let's Go, even though it easily could have. So those kinds of ideas didn't make into Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl for seemingly no reason, even though they like kinda did the Pokemon Let's Go thing. Like the graphic style isn't that serious. I like the chibis. You're an idiot if you don't like them. Like at that point, you're just so hateful and toxic that you might need to just take a look at yourself touch some grass, and then just take a break from the internet for a bit if the chibis offend you, because this is still a gorgeous game. Also, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl reduced decks, so it's kind of like Let's Go in that way, and that's like, okay, there's only so much impact that could happen. Like, Generation 1 Shinies are completely devalued because of Pokemon Let's Go, outside of hacking, which is just completely made all Shinies worthless no matter what generation or what game they're from. But like, okay, so it's like, okay, now you have Generation 4 Shinies that you have to wait a bit to put into home to maybe put into Pokemon Sword and Shield to then give the competitive, like, mark to then use in competitive, like... Like, why why not just let that happen for Shinies, or like just extra better Pokemon or something? Also, VGC 2022 is still going to be for Pokemon Sword and Shield, so why so serious, bro, on making IVs, EVs, everything more frustrating and lacking quality of life? And th again, there were just simple ideas, like, okay, cool, Blissey's being like the best way of getting experience in the underground if you want to make the Elite Four hard. Go for it. Also, modifying some trainers, like, why not just put some triple level 75 Blissey person that you farm on the Verse Seeker in the game? Like, you still gotta put in some time, still gotta put in some work, but there's something massive there, and people would find that out anyways. Like, okay, you do the Blissey bases and Omega Ruby off Sapphire, and you can also just kind of just farm dens endlessly to get enough extra large candies to where that, that doesn't matter anyway. So, it's like, yeah, you just get fast level 100 Pokemon in those games, but not... In Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, the newest Pokemon game. Small, simple ideas and not wanting to be unnecessarily aggressive towards the player difficulty. And then we got something... Then we got something great. And then also, like kind of like what I mentioned earlier, EV training. The vitamins don't work because the, tr the Ace Trainers being the best money-making method, it's not even that crazy of money. So it's actually really slow to do the Ace Trainer method to then get money to then buy vitamins, especially because there's no half-off vi vitamins. There's no special thing that's going on to make the games more tolerable. And then the EV training, the Underground doesn't really have any EV methods, no SOS, no nothing like in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So it's like, you have to use power items. So now we're going all the way back to Gen 4 because we don't even have hordes. Hordes were really cool for training in Pokemon X and Y, so like, this is the most traditional EV training quality of life lacking, and again, I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm, a, I'm down with the nostalgic experience. I'm down with putting in a lot of work, but still less than Generation 4, somewhere in between, to get to earn my team, and then like, go out there and battle in one of the best metas that's ever existed in Pokemon with Gen 4 only. If the Pokemon community wasn't so toxic and ruined by cheating, hacking, and disallowed glitching, like the cloning glitch, like clearly that's cheating. No amount of mental gymnastics change that the cloning glitch is disallowed and cheating, but you still see it. People out there calling hacked Pokemon legal. A legal hack. 
You just can't argue with that stupidity. And it's not just a couple people in the Pokemon community, it's a majority of the Pokemon community at this time. And it's just super sad. So, like, yeah, the quality of life would make up for that. It shouldn't have to, but at the same time, we saw that with, like, Pokemon Let's Go, Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's like, okay, that's the direction that Game Freak or Ilka or the Pokemon Company or whatever wants to take. Fine. It's a little bit of a concession, seems unnecessary, but it just makes the games kind of, like, have its own wacky fun inside of it. But now, just Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shine, Pearl, all these things turn a great game into something that's more tedious. And, like, tedious can be alright. I love RuneScape. I played several hundred hours of New World already, even with all the problems that New World has and stuff. So it's like, I, I like working for my things. I just don't like it when that all gets subverted. No one likes that. So... It's just a, just a very weird thing going on with these games, you know? So those are my problems with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but much like my problems with Pokemon Unite, it's mostly community-based. The Pokemon community has become so toxic that it corrodes, it pollutes everything it touches nearly instantly. Yeah, the devs could do better. Yeah, there's issues with both games, but that doesn't mean that the community then has a right to destroy the games even more. Because I've even been seeing people like saying, well, if Pokemon Company doesn't care about their games anymore, I should just be allowed to hack. Or if they l allow these glitches to be in. The devs never want glitches to be in their games, which is why they get patched out, which is why we can prove that cloning is cheating. You know, these, these are not intentional acts when it comes to clearly broken game issues. And that also doesn't mean that the devs aren't trying or that the game is bad. Every game has glitches, even the best games in history. Let's look at Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 isn't a 4 out of 10 game, Nintendo sucks, Mario's a dead franchise now because you can backwards long jump and beat the game in 15 minutes. No. And Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl is the same way. That the game, like the, the glitches don't ruin the game, it also doesn't make the game a bad game. But people are going out of their way to ruin the game with the glitches that don't impact normal gameplay at all. And then they're blaming the devs and then using that as justification to ruin the game more. And then condone hacking, cheating, and cloning, and all these other like terrible things that are being done inside the game. And then people complain about that even more. It, again, it's, it's unbelievable how toxic and idiotic the Pokemon community has become in this way. And hypocritical, and just like, the outlier in all of gaming. The person that is hacking is always in the most wrong. It's not like, well, the devs should have tried harder, and that's why they're at fault for all these people cheating. No, no, no. The person going out of their way to ruin another person's experience through cheating is the one that's in the wrong. But the Pokemon community just fails to comprehend this. And there's always, like, the hacker cat and mouse and the glitching cat and mouse and where this gets patched, but then a new method is discovered. And there's only so much that can be done. Now, could the Pokemon Company or Ilka or Game Freak just, like, work harder to kind of remove these things sooner? Because it was also unforgivable how long it took to, like, patch out the clearly illegal dens being hosted online, where it's like, oh, that's just a Zation den week two. Yeah, like, how how does the code even allow for that? People were getting, like, Squirtle and God Eggs and stuff. It's like, N that, that should be patched out immediately and should have never happened in the first place. But at the same time, there's still people exploiting it, and they're definitely more in the wrong at the end of the day. But yeah, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shine, and Pearl, at the end of the day, it's got some problems. I still give it an 8.9 out of 10 because it's a good game. There's good things to this game. The gameplay loop is still strong. It's still fun. And really, it's, again, the Pokemon community that's making it feel worse. And there are some other things that are like, oh, come on, didn't have to be that hard or that bad for no reason that are kind of holding the game down. So that's where we are right now. It's a shame. And... It's one of those things where, like, everyone's worried about the future of Pokemon or Game Freak right now or the main series because of, like, how Game Freak's handling it. I don't have a problem with that. I'm like, Pokemon Let's Go, second favorite Pokemon games. Pokemon Sword and Shield, third favorite. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shine, Pearl, strong Pokemon games. I'm worried for Pokemon because of how the community has destroyed the integrity of all Pokemon games at this point. And you can even see that when the devs try to make a move to cater to this awful, toxic, idiotic community, it just leads to worse games. That's what's going to happen with Pokemon Legends Arceus, and unfortunately, that's what happened for a few features inside of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. But also, after Pokemon Unite almost immediately got obliterated by a horrible community and exploitative influencers that are also scumbags in their own right, I, I don't know what happens for the future of Pokemon. Like, I have a couple ideas as to what can work, but at the same time, I don't even know what can work or save Pokemon at this point. And it makes me upset, but I still play the games because they're fun and it's something to do. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.